Hi, my name is Cal Mitchell, founder of SQL Pipe. In this video, we're going to migrate a paid SQL Server database to a free Postgres database with zero downtime. Yes, you heard that right, zero downtime. We'll be using SQL Pipe's newest product, Albatross, and the open source Babelfish extension to facilitate this migration. In case you're unaware, Babelfish is a Postgres extension from Amazon that allows it to understand and execute SQL Server queries. Since it is open source, you can actually run Babelfish anywhere, not just on AWS. Albatross has three key features to make this process easier and safer. First, Albatross automatically catches up your Postgres database to your source SQL Server database without having to do any clunky and error-prone manual transfers. Second, once Postgres has caught up to SQL Server, Albatross can cut your clients over from SQL Server to Postgres with zero downtime. And third, Albatross can detect and log any differences in query results between SQL Server and Postgres. We encourage you to run this feature for an extended period before making the final switch so that you have confidence that Postgres is behaving in the way that your clients expect. The benefit of migrating in this way is that you get the immediate financial benefit of adopting the open source Postgres and Babelfish technologies without having to change all of your other code first. Then, once you've made that initial migration, you can continue integrating further into the vast Postgres ecosystem. If you'd like help with this migration, we also offer professional services to help you get it right the first time. All right, that's enough talk. Let's open up Albatross and start the process. Here we have SQL Server Management Studio, or SSMS, and PG Admin open. SSMS shows two hosts running SQL Server, one of which contains our source SQL Server database called MyDB. The other instance is actually Postgres running the Babelfish extension. This extension allows SSMS to recognize it as SQL Server. PG Admin is actually showing that same host, but it's recognizing it as Postgres, which is pretty cool. As you can see, the first host contains the database MyDB, while the second host does not. This database's schema has 10 tables, complete with foreign keys, triggers, stored procedures, and a variety of data types, which is to say it contains many of the objects that SQL Server's users rely on. We're going to transfer this database to Postgres with zero downtime right now. First, let's apply some load to SQL Server. Here, I have a custom tool that allows me to simulate traffic from a backend server. This is not a performance load tester. When I turn it on, you can see that traffic to the first host spikes. We're going to continue simulating traffic for the remainder of the demo. And now, here's Albatross's UI. Let's click the Get Started button. Now Albatross presents us with specific instructions on how to use SSMS to export our schema from the source database. I'm going to follow these instructions exactly in fast motion. Feel free to pause if you want to take a closer look. Once we have generated the schema generation code, we'll scan it with a tool called Compass, also provided by Amazon, to see if we need to change anything to be compatible with Babelfish. Clicking the Run Compass button automatically runs this tool and opens a report. Let's take a quick look at this report because interpreting it and making changes to your schema generation code is the core part of this migration process. As you can see, the report tells you exactly what you need to change to be compatible with Babelfish and even gives you hints as to how complex it will be to make those changes. It's very easy to break these tasks out into stories or tickets and start assigning them to engineers or DBAs. In my experience, the tool is very good but sometimes misses a few things. For example, this particular report missed the fact that Babelfish does not support the with check clause in these alter table statements. If you want my team's help interpreting this report or making the proper changes, you can contact us at our website at sqlpipe.com or email us at info at sqlpipe.com. That information will also be at the end of the video. 
Albatross allows you to rescan with Compass as many times as you need to get the schema generation code right. I have prepared a copy of this file with the proper alterations ahead of time, so let's just plug that one in and rescan to show what a successful Compass report looks like. As you can see, there are no longer any items in the SQL features not supported in Babelfish section or the review manually section, so let's move on. Now we need to tell Albatross about our source and destination databases. I'm going to fill in the connection details for both SQL Server and Postgres's Babelfish endpoint and click Submit. The information looks good, so I'm going to click the Transfer Schema button to move all of the tables, triggers, stored procedures, and everything else except the data into Postgres. If I open PG Admin, you can see that there is a spike of activity in that database. You can see in both PG Admin and MSSQL that the MyDB schema has also been successfully moved. Going back to Albatross, you can see that it is telling us to point our SQL Server clients at Albatross. This is the magic part of Albatross that allows a zero downtime crossover to Postgres. Here's how it works. First, it proxies all traffic sent to Albatross directly to SQL Server. At this point, we can consider Albatross to simply be a new endpoint for our source database. So let's start another load tester, but this time pointed at Albatross instead of SQL Server. You can accomplish the same thing by performing a rolling update of your web servers. Now we can turn off the original load tester. If we look in SSMS, we can see that there was a short doubling in load, which corresponds to two load testers being active at the same time, but then it dropped back down. Great, just as we would expect. Now that our clients are pointing at Albatross, let's click the Start Catch Up button. This will begin the process of automatically catching up Postgres to SQL Server. Once the catch-up is complete, Albatross will begin sending all incoming queries to both databases. These two databases are now identical and are sent the same queries at the same exact time in the same order. For most intents and purposes, they can be considered logically equivalent at this point. However, Albatross will still respond to clients with the answer supplied by the original database, just to be on the safe side. And that brings us to maybe my favorite part about Albatross. The fact that it allows you to ensure that Postgres is giving you the same answers and behaving in the same way as SQL Server. To do this, Albatross logs all incoming queries after the catch-up process is complete. It also logs the responses from both SQL Server and Postgres, and whether those responses were identical or not, in a CSV file. We highly recommend letting this process run for at least a day and inspecting this CSV in Excel or with a Python script to see if there are any meaningful discrepancies between the two database responses. Let's take a look at that CSV file now. The rightmost column in this CSV tells you if the results from both databases are identical. The first page doesn't show any discrepancies. However, I built the schema and load tester in such a way that it should have created some rows that aren't identical, so let's find one. Here you can see that the rightmost value is false, which means that the values returned by both databases are not identical. I happen to know that the values are different because there is a timestamp generated by a trigger in both databases on a row insertion or update. In this case, these actions can be independent, so it actually makes sense for there to be an occasional difference in timestamp, so this doesn't concern me. You can run this process in Albatross as long as you want and analyze this CSV file any way that you want to make sure that your new Postgres database is reliable and safe to use. At this point, our migration process is complete, so we can perform one more rolling update of our clients. I'm going to apply some load directly to the Babelfish endpoint on the Postgres host and stop the load to Albatross's proxy endpoint. As you can see in SSMS, the load to SQL Server has stopped, but in PG Admin, the load to Postgres continues. Success! Time to save some money. I hope you've gotten some value from this video.
To sum up, Albatross can help you accelerate a migration to the free and open source Postgres database. Its automatic data catch-up and proxy features allow you to transition with zero downtime. And best of all, it even allows you to verify that your new database is a valid replacement for the old one. Albatross is available now, and we offer service packages to help you complete your migration on time and on budget. Contact my team by going to sqlpipe.com or emailing info at sqlpipe.com. Thank you.